Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel and this is the last video that I'm releasing for 2024. So I was thinking really hard about what do I want to say for the last video of 2024 and I thought I would share my five top digital tools that I probably use every single day for 2024. So if you're interested in finding out my five digital tools for 2024, then please keep on watching. Okay, so my five top digital tools for 2024. I think I have to start off with Canva. Canva have done a wonderful job helping educators and giving educators globally access to the pro version worldwide for free. And it's just so wonderful to see teachers embracing Canva. There are lots of AI functionalities on Canva. It's a beautiful visual suite. And very often we have the top designers in the world contributing to their designs. It's a one-stop shop if you want to remove backgrounds, generate QR codes, which is what I do. I also create my presentation templates on there because the visuals are just beautiful. And while Canva still can create presentations for you based on a text prompt, I think it's so important that we do edit and we have the human in the loop and the human input when we're creating anything. And so all of the templates are editable. You can change the fonts, the pictures, the text, and also use any design. In terms of my consultancy, not only have I used it for creating presentations, but I love the business proposal templates as well that look really professional. I love creating flyers for either events that I'm holding or even just guides for teachers such as Micromove. So recently with my partnerships, I've been talking a lot about the micro moves that we use as teachers that actually have a huge impact on teaching and learning in the classroom. So Canva, thank you so much. My workflow has been so much better. My designs have been so much better because of you. And thank you for supporting the educators around the world. Okay, so number two, what is another digital tool that I wanna talk about? And I've been using this tool for years when it used to be called Wallwisher. It's now called Padlet. And I'm so surprised how Padlet just keeps evolving and keeps getting better. So as we know, certain apps such as Flipgrid and Google Jamboard were discontinued, but Padlet actually really stepped up and created Sandbox, which is very similar to the Google Jamboard where we can use post-it notes. But even if you're not using the Sandbox, there are so many beautiful tools and ways that we can use Padlet to promote collaboration, to promote discussions. And I like to use it in my workshops to document our learning as we are unpacking different concepts together. So it's like a digital learning wall. So there's a physical learning wall normally in workshops, but I'd like to also document and take photos of everything that we do, all the artifacts that we create so that we can actually revisit that digital learning wall at any time. Our physical learning wall, unfortunately, comes down after my visit because the classroom and the spaces need to be used for different classrooms and students but the digital learning wall actually stays up forever. I have Padlet walls that are over 10 years old. And so when I meet a group of educators, I say, don't worry about the Padlet wall. It's going to stay up forever. As long as you have the URL, you can access all of the learning that we unpacked during our time together. My second digital tool that I would recommend for 2024 is Padlet. And thank you also for all the AI recipes and the AI functions that you've introduced this year. Okay, so my third digital tool, which is an AI tool, is Notebook LM, which is only one that I've discovered in the last couple of months because it wasn't released that long ago. And Notebook LM is a really great way to organize a lot of my information. So I use it as part of my workflow where if I'm unpacking research, let's say I get 10 different research papers in one folder. I love how we can put all of our information into one folder and I can interact with those research papers and ask questions and distill it and check it. Now, with Notebook LM, it doesn't use any of the data to train 
And so that means that if you don't save a note, that note and the output that's generated is lost. And I also like how Notebook keeps everything within that ecosystem. So I'm just searching that one document. I used to use chat PDF, but now I've migrated over to Notebook LM. It's free at the moment. There is a plus version. I'm still deciding whether I need to subscribe to the plus version, but I'd say Notebook LM has really changed my life. It's helped me, for example, recently with vertical and horizontal alignment with curriculum mapping of standards. It also has helped me with schools when we want to develop, for example, an AI ethical policy and an evolving unified AI policy. We put in a lot of the documents from around the world, different policies, we distill them and then we create our own. There are so many different uses of Notebook LM, but I'm finding more and more uses of Notebook LM as I use it more. So thank you, Notebook LM, and thank you for giving us a free version too. So, so far I've got Canva, of course, Padlet. Number three is Notebook LM. What's number four? Number four, I've talked about this particular tool in so many of my videos this year, and it's Poe, P-O-E dot com. Poe is an aggregator. And, and the free version actually gives you lots of access to different bots. If you subscribe, then you get access to even more bots and there's more power and more tokens. However, the beauty of Poe is as an aggregator, you have access to so many different large language models, such as all of OpenAI's models, pretty much including O1, the reasoning model. But you also get Claude's models, you get Minstrel's models, you get so many different models, as well as image generators and text to video generators, which I've been playing around with. I am actually still looking for a great text to video creator because I want to create the origin story of the birth of Pedaguchi. So if you've met Pedaguchi before, Pedaguchi is here as a gender neutral, inclusive companion that embraces all languages, all religions and all cultures. And Pedaguchi is here to remind us to always continue to keep human in the loop and humanize teaching using AI tools. And so I'm still looking for a text to video tool that will really give me a beautiful birth of origin story for Pedaguchi. I've been trying the different ones on Poe, but that's the power of Poe. Every time a new model is released, I look on all my bots and then I see, and there's still so many bots that I need to actually explore that I'm sure are really, really useful. So number four is Poe. If you haven't started using Poe, then just have a look, sign up for the free version and you'll already get access to so many different AI tools on Poe. Okay, number five is, is not something really obvious, but I do use it pretty much five times a week and it's Zoom. And it's all of the AI functionalities on Zoom. There's an AI companion that can summarize notes so we don't have to actually use a third party app anymore to take notes. I can get my transcript from all of my meetings. I can actually even record and that's what I'm doing now, recording all of my videos. There's a whole host of tools and it really promotes collaboration. So it's the breakout rooms showing uh, closed captions whenever you want. And I'm just reading across. You can automatically put a poll or quiz up. There are whiteboards as well. And then the apps that you can seamlessly add in. So I have Mentimeter as an add in on uh, as an app so I can just click a button and I can open up a Mentimeter and people in my Zoom meeting can access that. And I was really fortunate to start using Zoom during my doctoral program. So I've been using Zoom, I'd say probably for about 10 years now, well, whenever it was first released. And they actually had breakout rooms when they first released Zoom. I'm so happy to see that during the pandemic, so many people actually saw the value of Zoom and could really see the power of collaboration and interaction over a simple platform. So Zoom, thank you so much for giving us so many interactive tools and also all the AI companions and the apps that we can actually add to our meetings. It's just really increased my productivity, my collaboration, and also all of my virtual online workshops. So thank you, Zoom. So they're the five. Going over the five again, it's Canva, of course. Then we have Padlet. Google Notebook LM, Poe, and then finally Zoom and all of the 
AI functions on Zoom. I'm going to give you a bonus one, which is also free at the moment. And you've probably seen on my social media how excited I was to discover Napkin. Napkin AI as a visual tool. I've probably been using that every day, I would say, to really help with my visual communication. So I will navigate between different platforms. For example, I'll look at a document in Notebook LM and then some of the information I'll then put into a napkin, create a beautiful visual and then put that into a Canva presentation. So I'm kind of using all of these tools in one go, which actually streams, streamlines my workflow. So that's my bonus one napkin. I want to thank you for joining me this week and, and also for your wonderful support this year. It's been a really exciting year in terms of AI developments. It's really exponentially growing and I'm really excited about the future and what 2025 will bring. I've got lots of AI keynotes. So keep an eye out for any announcements. A lot of them are offered for free. I hope that you all have a wonderful, safe holiday and see you in the new year. Happy New Year, everyone. See you in 2025. Bye.